All right, everyone, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to our second virtual Heritage Cafe lecture series. Today we have Amber Haywood. She is um, the director of the Puyallup Language School. She also worked for the Tribal Historic Preservation Office for many years. And she's going to be talking about the work the school's been doing over the past six, year, six years to preserve, revitalize, and share um, the Puyallup language um, and just uh, preserve that culture for future generations. So I am super excited to hear from her and learn about what they're doing in this community. We also have Dr. Bill Barzma, who is the president of Tacoma Historical Society. This lecture series is put on by the City of Tacoma Historic Preservation Office, as well as Historic Tacoma and Tacoma Historical Society. So I'll turn it over to Bill to say a few words and then we'll hear from Amber. Well, thank you very much. And let me just say first off, the Tacoma Historical Society is most pleased indeed to be a sponsor of this very important uh, discussion this evening. Uh, our mission is to uh, make sure that we keep uh, history alive in Tacoma, and a part of that is to remember the culture and language and place that are an important part of our history, and we're going to learn much of that uh, this evening. We're very pleased to be a part of that. might note just that uh, Tacoma Historical Society has moved to a new location. We are now at 406 um, Tacoma Avenue South, not far from Wright Park. And uh, we certainly welcome people to uh, join with us. We're open for limited uh, time because of the pandemic, um, the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, Wednesday through uh, Friday, we're open from 11 to 3. You can call us uh, and uh, check in and we can make accommodations for you. I might add that our current exhibits, uh, one is entitled Keep, His Keep uh, uh, Fighting for Dreams That Matter. It's a focus on the history of social justice, some of the key figures that played an uh, important part in that. And that storyline, and Billy Frank and Ramona Bennett are two of those those uh, champions of, of social justice that we are recognizing at our exhibit. Uh, we also have an exhibit on the history of Tacoma banking. So, so come on by and check us out if you have the opportunity, or give us a call. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and of course, we're pleased indeed uh, to be a part of the action this evening. Thanks so much. Awesome, thank you, Bill. I would be remiss if I did not remember. Um, to mention that if you are in Tacoma, we are in the ancestral lands of the Tacoma Puyallup tribe, and that's something we like to do at the beginning of every city event, just to give that land acknowledgement. Right. Um, and now I will turn it over to Amber. Thank you. Hey, cool. Hey, Shaba. Aslachel tuagulapu si abdi Asia the siya ya ya chalap. Amber Hayward seed stops. We all apabs chad ati baraligwats. Salish Chad Yaptis Quilch, Otis Quayaligwads. A Slashel Chad, Otis Salish Ali, Otis Watuk to the Tis Boyala Pabs, as O a teed bud butter. U Yayush Chad to a Tis Boyala Pabs to a cheat at a Sali Achi Daladum. A two Yayush Chad, Oti, a Slala Olub Adi, as O a seed to Judy Wright, see Lolo. Sladai to all spoil the pubs. Hi, you yayush to a tis yayusari at a to shootsi to eat should chest a tis eation a tis to shootsi. Good day to you all. My name is Amber Hayward and I'm a Puyallup tribal member uh, from my father's side. On my mother's side, I'm a Salish uh, tribal member and uh, African American. Uh, I live on the Puyallup Reservation with my, my children, and I've worked for the Puyallup Tribe for almost 20 years, um, formerly in the Historic Preservation Department under the leadership of uh, our tribal elder, Judy Wright. Uh, I then have been working in the Historic Preservation Department, or not in the Historic Preservation, in the language program uh, for the past, I don't know, about eight years, um, and as the director for the past six years. Um, so I'm just very honored to be able to share um, a presentation with you all uh, this evening. And I would like to start with um, a Lashutzi land acknowledgement. And so I'm going to share my screen. This is also going to serve as an opportunity for you folks to see um, where this land acknowledgement is at and also for you to be able to use this land acknowledgement if you so desire. So with that... Uh, 
It is the land right here that the Puyallup people have lived on since the beginning. This right here. We work on our ancestral lands. We raise our children who go to school on the land of the Poyala people. We acknowledge that the Medicine Creek Treaty was signed for the whites to take our land for their benefit. Land was assigned to our people. The Caucasians said, this is your land, and they took that land from us too. Our land was stolen from us. Treaties were broken. But we are still here today. Our people forage for food and materials. We pick berries. We canoe. We practice our traditional ways and we speak to Just as our ancestors did. We are finished. So uh, today we are going to start with a language quiz. So how much do you know about the Puyallup tribal language? So you could just answer in your head if you would like. First question, what is the language of the Puyallup tribal people? And if people do want to answer, there is a Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. You can just type in your answer right there and Amber can see it. Absolutely. So here we go. So our uh, tribal language is called Lashootseed and our dialect is called Twolshootseed. So here's a little breakdown of the linguistic name for Lashoot Seed. So Lashoot Seed is the most accepted term in the linguistic community. And this was a term that was coined by uh, linguist Tom Hess, who created our dictionary. Uh, what he did was he took the word Lashoot Seed and he cut the beginning off of it. The prefix was removed to make the word easier to pronounce for non Lashoot Seed speakers. Our language is also referenced as Puget Salish and Puget Sound Salish. Other tribal name references, so they vary from tribe to tribe, uh, depending on the tribe. And so the first one you see there is Dufletchutli. That goes for the more northern speaking uh, Tulalip, Snohomish, um, Upper North. Kwolshotseed usually um, refers to Muckleshoot and Snoqualmie language. Twal Shotzi is usually Southern Lashootzi speaking tribes. And then uh, you'll see there where it says tribal names. Uh, people put their tribal name and language attached to it. So the Suquamish language is called Soquab Shotzid, Suquamish language. The Nisqually reference their language as Squali Ab Shotzid, Nisqually language. And Muckleshoot reference themselves as Buckleshoot Oatseed, Muckleshoot language. And then we actually um, have many references to our elders just calling it speaking Indian. So there's many ways that our people reference the language, but it is all one language. What dialect is spoken? The answer is Southern Lashootsee. So we have two predominant uh, dialects in Lashootsee, Northern and Southern, but there actually are many, many other pockets of dialects within the, the big language groups there. 
the boundary between the two dialects is roughly the King County lines of North Seattle. Question number three, what four tribes speak our tribal language? Muckleshoot, Skokomish, Snoqualmie, Chehalis, Tulalip, Upper Skagit. So out of that group, Skokomish and Chehalis do not speak Lushootsie. The Northern Lushootsie speaking tribes include Soxwaddle, Stillaguamish, Swinomish, Tulalip, and Upper Skagit. Southern Lushootsie uh, tribes include Muckleshoot, Nisqually, Puyallup, Snoqualmie, Squaxin Island, and Suquamish. And you'll see that our tribes pretty much hug the Puget Sound region. Number four, what language family does the Puyallup tri tribal language belong to? The Salishan language family. So we would equate uh, a language um, family to, let's say, Latin, and then the languages that fall underneath that. So you would have um, Spanish, French, and Italian. And so um, with the Salishan language families, there are 23 uh, languages that extend up to Canada, Washington, go all the way through to uh, Montana. And these languages have enough similarities between them that linguists are reasonably sure that these languages share a common ancestral language. Um, and I would also like to um, clarify, I feel like I hear this quite often that um, people outside of the native community referencing the Schutzied as Salish language, but they're actually two different things. So Salish language family is the language family that Lashootseed falls under. And so just again, to clarify, over in Montana, there actually is a tribe uh, that is called the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribe, and they're on the Flathead Reservation, and that happens to be the tribe that I'm also from. Uh, they actually speak Salish, and it's called Salish. Um, so there actually is a tribe called the Salish tribe that actually speaks Salish language, um, so I just not to be confused with Lashootsee, so I hope that clarifies a little bit about um, referencing tribes speaking Salish. Number five, how many letters are in our alphabet? The answer is 43. That is quite a bit more than the English alphabet. Uh, so you'll see lots of characters here that are not in the English alphabet, some that are. Uh, we also have a rule, it's one letter, one sound. So for example, in English, uh, let's see the word church, CH makes a CH sound. In Lashootseed, you'll see the, let's see, four, five, six letter over, the C with a little V over it, it's called C wedge. That one letter makes the sound CH. So for us, we, again, one letter, one sound, and we have multiple letters that are non-English sounds that cannot be represented by the English alphabet. Question number six, are there any living Puyallup tribal members who speak our language fluently? The answer is no. So the status of Lashootsi, the first language speaker is a person who fluently spoke the language uh, that was their very first language and they heard it growing up in their home as well. Um, so presently we do not have any Puyallup tribal members who are first language speakers. Um, so I cannot speak for other Lashootsi speaking tribes. However, I have not heard of a first language speaker being accessible. Um, or available to the community. Now that might be um, varying health reasons um, or even just accessibility. So I, have, I am not aware of any first language speakers. However, there are many heritage speakers, which means that somebody that grew up hearing 
the shoot seed, the English language dominated and English was their first language. However, they were able to understand the shoot seed. They were able to make sounds uh, and they were also able to, to understand and some of them were able to, to speak some Lashutzi, just not fluently. Uh, the status of Lashutzi, we have also many audio recordings of actual first language speakers um, that are, you know, in our collection and, and many other Lashutzi speaking tribes have their own personal collections of their speakers as well. Um, there's many documents, documentation on the Lashutzi language and uh, different archives. Uh, there is a Lashutzi dictionary that was uh, produced in 1994. That was again by Tom Hess, linguist, and he worked with many um, first language speakers as well. Uh, different Lashutzi speaking tribes have language programs and they also have teacher certification programs. And just to bring you up to speed, as of today in 2020, the Puyallup tribal community now has approximately 100 speakers when six years ago, years ago we had zero. So now that is the end of the quiz and we are going to get into why do we even have a language program? We have a language program because at a point in time in history, we had language loss. Uh, language loss happened because of the influence of European contact in this area, forced assimilation. Uh, the Indian boarding schools where children were being taken from their homes and forbidden to speak Lashutzi in these schools. Uh, then you also have fear of using the language after the forced assimilation after and during the boarding school era, you had children that were afraid to use the language when they returned home and very fearful. And you also had parents fearful that their children would be removed from them if they spoke their, their tribal language. And so the parents also stopped transmitting the language to their children. And then you have English language domination after that. And so that's how we ended up having language loss in our community. So what can we do to bring our language back is called language revitalization. Uh, these are some of the uh, not hard and fast rules, but this is what we have found to be very successful in the past six years. Language learning and revitalization has to start with the individual. It can't start with me as a parent saying, I really would like my child to speak the language. Here, teach my kid. It, it doesn't work that way. It starts with the actual individual. Uh, language use in the home. Now speaking language in the home is, is completely vital to revitalization. Uh, just because somebody might speak it at work and they're a language teacher, if they do not speak it in their home, they're not as successful um, of a speaker as if they did. Transmittal of language to children by parent or guardian. This is also another huge piece. Um, parents being involved in the language revitalization is again very key. Creating a language nest in, her, in your home is, is a physical location and space that does not allow English to contaminate it. Um, the next one is making the decision not to speak English. That is again the individual choice saying this language is important to me, I need to speak it and I'm going to choose not to speak English for these particular things I know how to say in Lashutzi. Uh, and the last component there is, is making the language visible, popular, accessible, and building interest. So all of these things we're gonna go over in this presentation um, up next. The goals of the Puyallup Tribal Language Program is to revitalize the Tulshutsi language in the Puyallup Tribal community. And this means uh, by producing speakers. Our mission statement also includes uh, the Lashutsi Dobo Dob Kwakwalek Abalek. Be kind, be helpful, and be sharing to all the people that we serve. This has been, again, an amazing tool to help revitalize our language and our community. Providing services for all types of learners. This is something we've also learned over the years is we need to produce different types of materials because people learn in all different types of ways. Uh, lastly, they're using tool shooting in our daily lives through communication, self-narration, creating a language nest, 
and speaking language in the home, workplace, and our communities. So now I'm gonna get into the uh, Puyallup Tribal Language Program. This is our staff. On the left, we have uh, media and web developer, Chris Duenas, who does all of the amazing things that you see out on the internet. Uh, Archie Cantrell is our longest uh, teacher that we have in the program. He works at our tribal school, which is called Chief Leshai. He is a middle school and high school uh, world language teacher. Uh, in the middle there, you have Zalmai Aswali Zahir, who is our language consultant. He is uh, the stepson of my great uncle, Don Matheson, who was a Puyallup tribal member. Zeke also um, spent many, many years uh, teaching the Lashutsi language. He also um, was taught by first language speakers as well in different areas, Snoqualmie, Muckleshoot, and he spent most of his time uh, with Vi Hilbert, who was an upper Skagit tribal elder. Next to him, you have Suela Duenas, who is a language teacher as well. He um, participates in teaching at our tribal school, Chief Fleshai. He does a lot of in-person services right now. We obviously cannot do that, um, but he does. He's our, 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 our guy who we bounce around the whole reservation to, to different groups. Next to him, you have Chris Brighton, who is a language teacher as well, and he is our online uh, Le Chutzied instructor. He is teaching presently, I feel like, seven or eight different classes online right now. Uh, there is me, I am the program director, and we also have Hope Sandstrom, who is our program coordinator, who puts all of our events together, organizes all of us, and just helps us out in general. This is who we serve. Our uh, the group that we serve is the Puyallup Tribal Community, and that includes Puyallup Tribal members, spouses and parents of Tribal members, anybody that works for any of our Tribal entities. And so that is our predominant focus group who we serve. That is our priority. Uh, our longest standing partnership has been with Chief Leshai Schools. We have been working with them um, for the past six years with their staff and with the children. We've also been working the same amount of time with Grandview Early Learning Center, which is our tribal daycare, where we also, again, work with staff and we work with the children at the daycare. Um, we've continuously worked with our Puyallup tribal community and also our tribal government. That includes our tribal council and our administration. Um, over the past several years, we, we had started online uh, tribal community classes and then now since um, quarantine, we've definitely uh, boosted those classes up. Originally, our uh, service group only included the Puyallup tribal community. So if you were a non-native or somebody outside of our community and wanted to take language classes, we do not have the capacity to service anybody outside of our group. However, just during this quarantine, we have um, continue to service the Puyallup tribal community, and now we have opened up our online classes to other Lashootseed speaking tribes. Um, and so that is our service group, and that's who we um, serve every single day. Here is a list of some things and services that we provide to the Puyallup tribal community, which includes translation requests, uh, material development, which includes documents, signage, posters, flashcards, brochures, audio, and video. We also uh, provide community language classes online. We teach middle school and high school classes at Chief Leshai School. We model language use in the classrooms, workspaces, and in the home, where this is where we physically go into these spaces and show people how to use Lashutsi. Uh, we do language presentations and workshops, just like this one here. We do public speaking, we open events, uh, we do informational booths, and before uh, quarantine, we were heavily out in the community servicing our people through traditional storytelling nights and community jams. So I wanted to clarify what we call a speaker. So we do not use the word fluent because there, it's not possible to be a fluent speaker because we do not have any first language speakers alive anymore. So this is how we produce a speaker um, in this instance in our um, 
the status of Lashootsi. So we produce a speaker um, by them being able to converse into a shoot scene, and that is comprehend what others are saying as well as being able to uh, formulate um, a conversational use of Lashootsi, scene, establishing a language nest in their home, using self narration of daily activities, and using Lashootsi scene for at least one hour a day. And with these four different bullet points, I'm going to go over these in detail um, right, right after this slide here. So conversation, um, we had to begin, like, like, what do we even talk about in English? And so what we did was we took that and we um, turned it into, what do you do? What did you do today? Where did you go? Who did you see? You know, what did you buy? And we turned that into some really basic common um, Le Chute seed. And as you can see on the left there, that is something that I do all the time. So if you asked Amber, stop what did you do today? I would say, So I just went through um, and told you just a couple things that I did today. Um, I will show a quick little video here of um, some conversation. Stab quad so ashen. Stab quad so ashen. Go bolt cha. O ashen chad ata blank. O ashen chad ata blank. Archie, stab quad so ashen. O ashen chad ata bayat. Chris, Stab quads o asad. O asad chad ata zabid. All right, so that's an example of what we call conversing. The next is a language nest, and that's a physical location in your home or a physical space that does not allow English. So this is an example of a bathroom language nest. So you'll see these laminated cards um, posted up in the bathroom. These are the self-narration activities that fill the language nest with, um, with Le Chutzi. Um, there are also the noun labels and verb labels can be placed in the language nest. And these are all to help understand and to remind us that we need to keep speaking with shoot seed. So I'm going to give a quick video here of what a language nest looks like. As you can see all the labels everywhere. All right, so I think you get the idea there. That's what a language nest looks like. We usually start in the bathroom. We also um, have lots of self-narration activities in the kitchen as well, because these are two spaces and places that usually you can have some sort of control over uh, without contaminating it with English. The self-narration, as you saw, uh, posted in the, in the language nest, um, they're about, I don't know, five to 10 sentences long of self-narrating what you do, daily activities that you actually do every day. So um, we usually start off with washing hands because we really hope people are washing their hands, brushing their teeth. Um, in the kitchen, it might be um, making coffee or frying an egg. So there's a lot of basics that we have, but we really strongly recommend people not to pick things that they don't do. Um, so if you're not doing it daily, we, we say, you know, please don't uh, pick that one because you're, you're not going to pick it up. Um, and so this, this method is also used, you know, to remove the excuse, well, I don't have anybody to talk to. And so um, you don't have to rely on anybody else to self-narrate everything that you do. So I'm going to go, sh again, show a quick video of what self-narration looks like.
Corona Pachanti Sapwa, Bachisha Pachanti Sapwa, Alti Sap Quasali, O Quasa Chanti Sapwa, Quarantti as Quas Sapwa, Quarantti Butter. Snachadap chud tea butter, all tea as quas of low. Quiet, All right, and he said he is done, but that's just a very quick example of what um, self narration looks like. Now I am going to move on to our website and social media. This is the part where we have to make our language popular and accessible to people. So we have many social media accounts. The, the ones that we use most frequently would be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we also use Snapchat as well. Um, some, some posts on Twitter and we do have lots of audio recordings on our SoundCloud account. <laughs> The goal of our website is um, to create a platform for distance learners. Uh, we also want to shoot seed accessible to all different types of people. It's to facilitate language use. And for me, most importantly, it's very well organized and easy to navigate through. Uh, the different structure that we have, and I'm actually going to click on the website so you can see that. Um, our homepage, if you wanna just get started, you just go right here. Um, we have about our program, but the most uh, highly trafficked um, section is the downloads and resources. So if you want to learn the shoot seed, anybody watching right now, and you're like, where would I even start? Probably send you to the basics. Uh, we have the alphabet uh, chart, which you can actually click on and hear the sound. I'm gonna pick a non-English sound. Let's go right here. Glottalize C wedge. Uh, uh. So you can click on these as many times as you like. If you're getting stuck on a certain sound, just keep repeating them over and over. We also have our Le Chute Seed alphabet song. Uh, we have a, an alphabet book, and we also have an actually uh, very thorough um, uh, alphabet pronunciation video as well. It goes over each and every sound, how to make them. Um, so this is a really good starting point if you want to know where to start. There's also many other um, areas and sections that you could look at for the basics. We have our online class material um, that again is open to the Pilot Travel community and the Shootsi speaking tribes. But if you're not in that group and you are really interested in learning the Shootsi, guess what? We have something for you right here. So this is recorded class video. So if we're not able to service you and you really want to do it, start going through these online the Shootsi video classes and you will see on the right that the attached documents that he's referencing in the video are all located right here. So if you wanted to print these out, start putting them up in your home, eventually he gets to conversation right here. So all of this is here. And then if you feel like you're doing really, really good, um, there's all these other classes that we leave the materials up for. So if you're just interested in looking at them or really want to try them, like absolutely, um, please do that. The language nest, I was telling you about um, filling that with the different um, self-narration activities are right here. All of these documents are here. They all have audio. Most of them have video as well. The conversation um, has the different topics and again, very user friendly. So for example, what did you eat has the audio right here, so the spellings, the sentences, and it also has the video in addition to documents. Um, some of these have flashcards as well. So that is our website. Um, it's so user friendly, like I said, there's other things, there's music, uh, we have literacy program, we have fonts and keyboards if you wanna type in the shoot seed. Um, so that is our website. <coughs> Our social media goals are to establish a relationship with our community, to get as much language out as possible, and to create an interest in our tribal language. Uh, goals also include familiarizing our community with the teachers. So this is where our, our people 
maybe they don't know us, but they feel like they know us through the videos. And we try to put out as much as we can about ourselves and, and, and open up our lives to, to people in our community. Um, this also is to make the language um, as accessible as possible, meeting the community where they're at. A lot of our um, initial videos had the shoot seed and English in them because our community was not um, comfortable with full immersion videos. So we found that that slowly working our way to less and less English um, was very helpful for our people. And, and mostly it's to um, keep our folks entertained while learning. Um, I will show you a link to where our um, playlists are. So if you're interested in that, we have a Lashoot Seed YouTube page. And if you're like, I really would like to see all these full immersion books, or I would really like to know some phrases, or here's all the conversation, uh, videos, we have storytelling night. So this is just a good spot on our playlist if you're wanting to find some focused, you know, material. Uh, before quarantine, we were out in the community often doing uh, community events. And so I would like to go over uh, what we do there. Storytelling night was such a huge success for us. This is where we opened up um, to our tribal community. We shared our traditional narratives and stories. These are like our creation stories. Um, we did, as you can see in this picture, we had props, we have costumes, we're acting out the story of the characters. Um, we're also doing song and dance. So before the storytelling even begins, each month we open the exact same way. We open with a Toshutsi prayer. We share songs and dances that are relevant to the story that we are sharing. Um, there's also storytelling protocol of how you are supposed to act and what you are supposed to do when you are listening to a traditional story. Um, you need people's full attention when, when you are telling a story. If you do not have people's full attention, you should not be sharing a traditional story. So the hello sub is, is being still, using all of your senses um, to, to listen. Uh, the guzarad is what you have learned, what you've taken away from that story, what that story has, has shared with you in your life where you're at. Habu is um, something that you say when you are listening to a traditional story to let the storyteller know that you are listening. Um, I, we do have time. I got a quick little link here to show you. Um, for example, when we tell the silver salmon story, the, the song that we use before that is the salmon homecoming, um, which I will show you here. <clears throat> So that's how we open the night um, with that particular story that we share. While we are telling the story, we tell the story four to five times because that's traditionally what our elders told us to do. Anytime we tell a traditional story, you have to repeat it four to five times. The, the story is told uh, line by line in Tuoshutsi and then translated into English. Um, each time we act it out over and over and over. So we have to act this story out four to five times. Uh, then when we are finished, we share what people's guzarad was, what they got from the story. Um, and everybody open, we open up the floor and they tell us what they learned. And I will show an example of what storytelling night looks like. Oh, let me go back. <clears throat> Through Stockdale, I'll come up with shoes. Torch, there was a little silver standard in the salt water. For Laura, he paid the next four weeks and he did the big silver standard. For a lot of the tiles, they must be going to go up river. Also, still pulled up in the rivers. Oh, they were together. For a few tiles. 
and they were going to have the river. So that's just an example of um, story, one of the storytelling nights that we did. We also provide, uh, provided monthly Toshutsi jam sessions that we opened up for our community. Uh, we always opened up with a meal. We shared the different Toshutsi songs that had come to our program and to our community. We had um, probably about 20 different Toshutsi songs come to us over the last couple years and we wanted to share them and explain what the songs were, explain the Lashutsi words in the song, share the dances and open up the floor for different teachings. Um, I have a video of that as well. <laughs> So we do have a video here that is about, uh, it's an hour and 11 minutes long of Puyallup community songs that um, we are fine to share within our community. So anybody watching can sit here and play this. Um, it is totally fine to, to listen to these songs. However, if you are going to uh, attempt to use them um, somewhere, you do need to get permission from the community, from the person who created that song to use, to use that song, to ask permission for that. Uh, let's see, the current service groups that we have and current projects that we have going on. So right now we are heavy on the online Toshutsi classes. Uh, Christopher Bryden is one of our teachers. He is amazing. Um, he again is, is pumping out like seven to eight different classes all week long. It is open up to the Piot tribal community and Lashutsi speaking tribes. Uh, the curriculum is designed to facilitate speaking, not teaching. It's focused on everyday topics and uh, daily activities. So all of those things that I had gone over previously about conversation, self-narration is what we, we teach in our online classes. We also presently partner with Chief Leshai Schools. Um, we have been there since, for six years, uh, working from elementary all the way up to now, middle school and high school, where the students get credits for Lashutsi classes. The goal is to increase tool shoot seed use with the students and staff. We've helped to establish a very healthy environment for language to grow and to thrive in our tribal school. This is our teacher, Archie Cantrell. He's actually in the tribal school. We've, we've let the school borrow him. Um, they will be posting for their own language teacher that we hope to have filled um, this year. Uh, but Archie very much loves the children and he loves working with them. Again, he's having to do that through Microsoft Teams right now, uh, but again, he's still enjoying it. And these children, after they go through his class, they are able to read, write, converse, do the self-narration. They can comprehend, they can do storytelling, they MC events at the school, and they can also do canoe journey protocol. Uh, we also, Archie Cantrell, who was in that last slide, um, put, put this Toshutsi classroom reference guide together um, to use in the classroom for the Shutsi speaking tribal schools. Um, it's a guide. Uh, it helps to um, incorporate all of the materials that he's used throughout the year without having to shuffle through a bunch of papers. We've just put them all into one book. Um, and we are working on a volume two, which includes lesson plans. And we've already had two other tribal schools purchase these books to use in their schools. We also had another huge project uh, finished last year was our Twoshutsi Literacy Project. Uh, we had a grant and I knew I wanted us to make some books. So these are full immersion books uh, written by the Puyallup Tribal Language Program staff. 
we uh, commissioned a Puyallup tribal photographer and an illustrator for um, the books. And we also created videos to accompany them. So if you don't speak Lashutsi, you're not completely lost. You can still have them and use them. So we have an entire um, section on YouTube with it. And at the very end of these books, there is an English uh, key. So if, again, you don't, you're not completely lost. But this was something we passed out to our tribal members, tribal school, tribal daycare. Uh, lastly, a current project we are working on right now is the Cushman Boarding School and Cushman Indian Hospital uh, video. We are putting this together and we've uh, presented this at different places and spaces over the last um, couple years. Uh, this is a full immersion history video and, and it talks about the pre-contact contact, contact um, timeline of events that transpired on the Puyallup Reservation and actual stories heard from tribal elders, um, including one a very personal story. Um, and so this project is set to be released on November 1st of this year. So please stay tuned for that. With all of that, we are finished. Are there any questions? So I'm going to stop screen sharing. Hope that worked. Did Thank you that so work? much for sharing, Amber. Yes. That was great. Um, I did have a question just myself, and then I'll read you some from the Facebook page. But since you said that you can't be fluent, um, is it possible to use the language every day for everything, including modern things like computers and all of that? Absolutely. Yep. So our um, the our language consultant. Oh boy. Sorry, my <laughs> lights just went. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you guys can see me. Um, our language consultant, he's able to do that all day long. And, and we've pushed ourselves to the point where we can also do as much as we can by the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. There are some things that we just don't have words for, but we also have created newology, which does describe, you know, computers, cell phones, the different things that we have now. So in order for a language to evolve and move forward, you have to create new words for things. Wow, and who's responsible for that creation? Language experts, or how do you decide? Our, yep, our linguists are um, Zalmai Zahir. And so um, what we have issues with a lot of times is our English brains, right? English is our first language. And so we want to force English onto the shoot seed, but that's not how our tribal language works. So he's there to remind us, you know, like, um, let's see. Sapas lach debut means computer. And so that is by means of remembering. Um, and so we have to describe things as if they were, um, were have a Lashutzi brain on. Um, I hope that makes sense. But the, yeah, we have to describe things. Mm -hmm. to, usually it, our, our words describe something. That's really interesting. Um, so we do have a question from one of our viewers. If the Salish language family corresponds to the Romance language family, um, la like Latin, is it also part of a larger language group as the Romance family is part of the Indo-European language group? Um, so I, I use the Latin um, example because I think people can relate to that and understand that. Um, so you have this umbrella and then you have languages that fall underneath it. And if you speak, you know, Spanish and Italian, there's a lot of similarities in the grammar, even some of the sounds, some of the words are the same as well. And so uh, Salish is the same thing. It's the umbrella. And then you have all these languages underneath it. Um, so I can give an example in my mom's, uh, my mom's language, which is Salish. The word for mom is skoi. In Lashutsi, in my dad's language, the word for mom is koi. So, hmm, you see what I mean? So it's, it's all under that umbrella and there's, there can absolutely be uh, similarities. And I also took a Salish class um, during the summer and there's, there's again, the word for 
I or me in Lashootsee is Chud. In Salish, it's Chun. So a lot of times our B's and D's got, or M's and N's got switched for B's and D's, but over in Montana, they, they were able to hold on to their M's and N's. As over here in Lashootsee, they were not, they were influenced by um, English. And so I just, I hope that's helpful for people. And again, it, I know it's confusing because there's actually a Salish language and then you have the Salish language family that Salish falls under. Um, so yeah, I, I hope I hope that was helpful. It's just fascinating, I think. Um, how are the youth open to that? Are they, are they pretty excited about it or are they kind of like, eh, old stuff? Um, so I think it's really cool because Nobody in our office really grew up with Lashoot Seed outside of one person. They heard their grandpa speaking it. And wow. so all of us are adult first language speakers. We just heard little words here and there in our community. And uh, so we're all adult language learners. And now for the past six years, all of our children have, have just come along with us. And so if you ask my six-year-old son, about Lashoot Seed, he's like, yeah, that's normal. I hear it all the time. I've heard it since I was a baby, you know? So for our kids, they aren't going to know a time when they didn't have Lashoot Seed. For my 13-year-old, he was about like eight years old when we started this. Again, it's become so normal for him. And now we've created a community of about 100 speakers wow. to where these kids are just used to it now. Um, and so I think that's really amazing. And at our tribal school, you know, again, we've created a really healthy space for, for kids and staff that the, again, it's just, it's now it's very, very normal. And we're trying to spread that out to uh, different places and spaces in our community. So it's not just kids that it, it's everybody, it's adults, you know, it's people that aren't Indian and they're on a reservation and they see the shoot seed signs or they hear people at the gas station speaking with shoot seed, um, you know, so that's really the ultimate goal is to, a part of revitalization is having it be a normal thing. So if you go to Mexico, you're probably going to hear Spanish. You're probably going to see signs that are written in Spanish and you're probably going to hear people speaking Spanish, right? So we just really hope that people are able to come to our reservation to recognize that they are on tribal lands and also that um, they come onto our lands and they could be expected to speak with Shootsi. That's so important. How do the elders feel about this? So uh, my parents, my dad is from Mexico and I did not learn Spanish as a child because of what you said, um, you know, immigrants weren't encouraged to speak their language. Um, they were encouraged only to speak English. So um, do the elders feel comfortable or what's their sort of impression? Um, it is really hard to work with adults because of that initial slide I went over, the language loss. Many of our elders remember that time where their parents were forbidden to speak the language or they would refuse to transmit the language to them uh, because they didn't want their kids to be taken away. So there's absolutely some negative, um, really negative um, and sad and hurtful feelings that come from our elders um, in hearing or wanting to learn the Lashootsee language. I feel like we've also, again, with our mission statement to be kind, be helpful, and be sharing, we just love on everybody. We try our best to make people feel good, uh, even if there is some other type of feeling that they're having. And so we've absolutely seen our elders, you know, transform, and they're so joyful to hear the language. Some participate with us. Some um, elders have their own grandchildren that are speaking the language and is making them so joyful. Um, so yeah, I get this all part of making it a healthy environment. So why was it important? Was it, it, it sounds like it was sort of a, a younger generation movement and not from the elders to kind of revitalize the language. And why was that important um, to the um, generation? I think it, it just organically happened. I just happened to be that way that the two people in our office was me and Chris Duenas, who he's in his 30s. I was in my 30s at the time. And then we got a couple more positions open and a couple more 30 year olds, uh, 20 year olds. And, and it's, I think we were attracting a certain age group. And so our entire office is under 40 years old. 
And so naturally, we're going to want to make materials that appeal to us. And then obviously, our demographic on social media and the website is 18 to 40 year olds. So it's, it's, yeah. it's working uh, because, you know, that's who's, who's getting drawn, drawn to us in that way, really organically. Great. And so and has, can you see what effect this has had on the community or, or on your culture? Has that brought people together or? It's, it's the most amazing effect that I have ever witnessed in the tribe. Like, honestly, wow. um, it is just the most beautiful thing to be able to hear a language, uh, for people to have joy. Uh, again, like last year before quarantine, language was heard at pretty much every single tribal event. We were able to wow. go into like government spaces and open up in Lachute or our council members are speaking Lachute Seed when they go back to Washington, D.C. Um, at, you know, like I said, any any event we have, it, Lachute Seed is there and it's just really, really amazing. And so uh, the, the thing we hear most is our tribal members really miss our storytelling nights coming together um under during that time and it was about an hour and a half long um event but that's something we just, we just miss we miss singing we miss being together uh, we miss hearing the language yeah just that clip you you showed us was um, really beautiful to hear um so i mean i think we don't have any more other questions it looks like i see people just saying thank you on facebook and that it was really um fascinating um i guess one wrap-up question i have is um do you want people outside of the Puyallup community to use the language or hear the language or share the language? Or is this something um, you really want to keep for the Puyallup community? That's a really good question. And I thank you for asking that. Um, so anything and everything that we put out on the internet is for people to access. And that's anybody. Um, we would love for non-natives to speak our language on our reservation. Absolutely. Like absolutely 100%. So that example I said, when you go to another country, you're expected to speak their language, right? Or to understand mm -hmm. or to know. Um, we absolutely want that. We would love for, you know, people in our community to, um, to embrace our language. And there's, there's other, other groups that would probably not agree with us. Um, but that's probably the fastest way a language is going to die is if you restrict it to certain people. Now, there's absolutely things that we don't have on the internet that are not for non-natives and we're not going to put it on the internet because yeah. it's not for other people. So we don't even need to worry about that because we're not <laughs> putting it out there. Perfect. <laughs> um, makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. But if we restricted, let's say at our tribal school, if we said only Puyallup tribal members are allowed to speak Lashutzi, most of our staff is not Puyallup. So oh, wow. our kids are not going to sit there and be able to hear our language, right? Mm -hmm. So we open it up to the teachers who are non-native and they have really taken a hold of it and are using our language in the classroom with our children all day long. So that's a win. Like that's a win-win. That's, that's absolutely what we want. Absolutely. And in the Historic Preservation Office here, we have been involved with some of the renamings um, uh, the uh, Fishing Wars Memorial Bridge, and then I believe one of the um, Tide Flats Parks. And so uh, is that something that's really important too, is renaming things? Oh, absolutely. That's, again, another part of language revitalization for sure. And we, uh, Yabok Ali is the name of the, the bridge, and we were happy to um, be able to offer a name for that. That means a place of a fight. Um, City of Tacoma, folks, if you're hopefully listening and watching, we've been meeting with them for a couple years mm -hmm. about uh, street signs in Lachute yeah. City on Portland Avenue. Um, so I would absolutely love to um, keep that rolling. Um, I'm, I'm super happy to be a part of, you know, different naming, uh, namings across Tacoma. But again, it's, it's if we have the time and the capacity to do that type of work, which now, right now, we, we do have time for it because we're working from home, so. As a non-native, I think that it's so important to see those names out and about because I think then you can really see, you know, who this land really belonged to and, and their impact on it because we don't have that built environment that we have, you know, with historic buildings and things. So um, just to me, I, I love seeing the signs and the names out there. Uh, actually, I see a few questions coming in the Q&A, so if you want to take a look, Amber. And oh, sure. 
You can answer those. All right, I see. Is there a word or phrase for thank you in the shoot seed that you could teach us tonight? Absolutely. Um, so it's a little more complicated than thank you, but it's, it's a good one. Um, so to a woman, you would say, he's cool. He's cool. To a man, you would say, hey, Shabbat. Hey, Shabbat. To uh, a group of people, you could say, hawatub shalap. Hawatub shalap. That means, um, Thank you to all of you folks. And then a really nice thing that we like to say is us kwadi to bushedchash. Us kwadi to bushedchash. We are praisingly grateful to you. Thank you. There's another question on Facebook, and it's just kind of a, uh, I'll summarize, it's pretty long. Um, how are new words created for modern life and things that did not exist pre contact? So I don't know if there's a formula for how you create new words. <laughs> yeah, so for like newology, I'm trying to think of some new. Um, oh, okay. Somebody just asked us how you say water pick. Uh, because it, it's one of our Lashutzi teachers and we were doing like a brushing teeth um, self-narration and they said, well, my student has a water pick. How would you say that? And so um, it means to spray teeth. That's the word he came up with. It, it literally means to spray teeth. So um, we, Lashutzi really just use uh, descriptive um, ways to describe things, to name different things. So there's hard times where we, we, um, we don't have, like somebody, how do you say pizza? Yeah. So we're like, I don't, so we just don't, we don't. So we'll say, oh, after chad at a pizza, I ate pizza. Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like people hear that in other languages too. Like if maybe Spanish speakers, you hear them kind of bounce back and forth yeah. between Spanish and English because maybe, you know, maybe they just prefer that English word. Um, so there is a lot of times where we still use the English word. We just plug it in uh, because we, we've, you know, try to figure out what we're going to call pizza. Something round, like, I, I don't know, but there's a lot of things that are round. So we, we just don't have a, we don't have a word for pizza. So that's, that's how we do it. We describe the, the thing or we just insert the English. That's interesting. Um, and I'm assuming it was an oral tradition, the, the Pugab language. So are you writing things down now? Is there like an official dictionary? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So everything was oral. Then we had linguists and anthropologists come in and start writing down uh, the language. Some of the old anthro anthropologists um, use different writing systems and they tried to use English letters to describe the, um, the Lashutzi characters and, the, and it just wasn't working because they're not English sounds. Um, and so our, our Lashutzi speaking elders worked with Tom Hess, our linguist, and they came up with an alphabet that they all agreed upon. And they said, do not, do not change this alphabet. And so that's what they used. They were able to, to read it, to write with it. They taught with it. Um, that's how our language consultant learned from a first language speaker in Muckleshoot, and she taught she taught him how to read it and write it. So, wow. awesome. So I see one more question here, and it says, um, "Please let us know how we can help support your work uh, and rename sites." So I don't know, is there something you want the broader community to be aware of and help you with people who are not part of the Puyallup community? Um, I would absolutely love to talk to anybody out there, out and about, if, if you have funding or you want to donate, um, we absolutely have ideas that we would love to get our language out in the greater Tacoma area. So uh, just recently, we purchased five different styles of yard signs that are all in the shoot seed that were, um, the artwork was done by Puyallup and Salish Community members and they have Lashutzi shoot on them and so we are going to tag up Tacoma with those signs and we're also going to pass them out so if you like to stay tuned on our social media sites you know please check that out but if you would like to help just go on our website and learn our language if you want to give financial support please do that like we can absolutely spend your money you know <laughs> um, and and if you are working use your influences use your spaces that you are in if you um, 
people aren't doing land acknowledgements, do them, right? Say we're on the land of the Puyallup people. If you want to incorporate Lachute seed into your workspace and not just like a one-time thing, say you have, you know, like work brochures or, or your website and you want Lachute seed on it, come and talk to us. That continues to help broaden, you know, the awareness that, you know, we are Puyallup people. We have a language we are speaking. We're here and that you're supporting us. So there's, there's all kinds of ways that um, you could help. Um, uh, I, I just really would hope it's not a lot of work for me, you know, like some huge requests that we can't, you know, fill. And can you transcribe these, you know, this chapter of English for something, you know, we're probably not going to do that, you know, um, but just little things that I can get to where I, we absolutely can um, work with, with folks outside of our community on. Awesome. Thank you. And speaking from the preservation office, um, we would love to share, you know, any history. I share all your posts, all the historic preservation posts. Um, so, you know, without making more work for you, um, we want to be able to <laughs> get the awareness out there. Um, I don't see any more questions. So um, if you have anything else for us, I want to just say thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I think this is very important information um, to get out there. Well, thank you guys very much for having me. Raising my hands to each and every one of you. All right. Good night and thank you. Boy.